So you may have seen the videos I put up a week or so ago on MUT, the terminal-based email client, one of my most favorite programs, but also one of those programs that's just really hard to configure, especially because there's so many options and there are also other programs that can go and can sync really well with it, but it takes a lot to set up. So you may know um, around a year or so ago, I made this thing called the MUT wizard. Now when I, it, it's always worked, but it's always also been really messy until very recently. In fact, even if you installed this like a week or so ago when I, I talked about it on my channel, it was bad then. And reinstall it now, it's much better. I want to do a video on it, just show showcasing how easy it is to manage your email nowadays. So the point of Mutt Wizard is not just to configure Mutt, it's to configure other programs like iSync to automatically download your mail at the same time, and MSMTP to send mail, and things like not much, and to search through mail, all this kind of stuff to have everything offline. Um, now, Mutt Wizard pretty much, you really just give it your email address and it takes care of most of the stuff for you. Uh, and it can handle multiple accounts and all this kind of stuff uh, that otherwise it's going to be a big pain, you know, getting the equivalent. So I just wanted a lightweight and locally sourced email client and Mutt is one of the best and the Mutt Wizard is pretty fantastic at giving. Now, usually I do reviews on programs, you know, just programs out there. It feels a little weird to do a review of a program I wrote, but it's, it's legitimately good and you should try it out, even if you have no interest in using Mutt or something like that. So anyway, so how does this program work? Well, first off, I will say um, as of a couple days ago, uh, Mutt Wizard is now actually in the AUR, so you can, if you're an Arch user or you use an Arch-based distro, you can just install it from there. Otherwise, you can just clone this repository and compile it on your computer. So that's what I'm going to do just as an example. So I'm going to clone that. Oh, I actually cloned it already. Okay, never mind. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to sudo make install it. And that's pretty much it. So now it's installed. Although beware that there are dependencies that you do need to actually run it. I mean, the AUR, if you install it from the AUR, it's going to pull them automatically. But just make sure you actually have NeoMutt installed. I think you need to add email accounts and it also downloads the mail. MSMTP sends mail and pass safely encrypts your passwords so people rooting around on your system can't just see them. They're not like in plain text or something. So once you install it, I'm actually going to go, I'll go back to the home directory. So once you install it, uh, you can, you do have a manual. You can type in man mw for mutt wizard, and that gives you all the basic information. You can check that out, but of course I'm doing a tutorial video, so I'll just show you. So if you just run it by itself, you might get this error message. Um, now, as I said, you need pass to encrypt passwords, um, but you... Uh, if, if you haven't set up pass before, it will just give you this message. So really just what you need to run is pass in it and then whatever your GPG password or GPG email is, and that's all you have to do. Then you can run it. If you don't have a GPG key pair, you just need to run this command as well before, but it's the short process. It doesn't really require anything. But once you do that, you can run Mutt Wizard and you'll be able to encrypt your password safely. So um, by default, it just shows you the options. Now we want to, let's say we want to add an email account. So I'm just going to say write, um, run MW and then add. Um, it's going to ask you, do you want offline mail with this? I'm going to say yes. You have the option of storing your mail offline or just logging in every time you open MUT to a remote server. I vastly prefer having offline mail. It's just much faster. Um, so I'm going to say yes. I'm going to put in the email address that I was using as an example a couple weeks ago in my videos. Now for most email addresses, it will look at your domain name and it will automatically guess what your server information is, your uh, IMAP server and your SMTP server. It just has a little database of a bunch of common email providers. Yours might not be in it, in which case you will have to look up your IMAP and SMTP uh, server information, but Mutt Wizard is gonna put that information in all the files it needs to automatically. So anyway. Once it does that, it's going to ask you for a name you want to have. I'm going to say Mutt Muddington and um, an account name. This is important. This is just sort of in the back end what it identifies the account as. And I'm just going to say Mutt. And um, then it's going to ask you for a login. Now, what that means that most people are just going to put nothing here. But this is for people who might have enterprise uh, email accounts. For most people, if you just have a normal email account, just put nothing here. Um, and then you can enter whatever your password. What is my password for this account? Okay, I remember. So I'm going to put in my password. Uh, I think that's it. 
Uh, okay, so that's working, and I'm decrypting my GPG key right here. And um, okay, so that's it. So you'll see it says mailbo mailbox is detected. Everything should be totally synced, and it's going to say uh, this is the command you want to run MB sync mutt to start downloading your mail. So if I run MB sync mutt, it's going to download that mutt account's uh, email because I named the account mutt. Or you can just run MB sync a for downloading all your accounts. So for right now, it's downloading my mail. It's not going to take very long because this is just the fake email account you know that I made with some fake emails. But once that is done. Everything is set up and you can go ahead and jump into your email system. So I'm going to run Neomut and here you'll see, here's my email. Everything is here. Some basic bindings. So actually, let me turn on. Do I have screen key installed? Yeah, I do. So, you know, you have like sort of Vim-like bindings. If I want to go up and down, it's J and K. Go into a mail is L or I can open up the attachment view in L or I can go backwards with H. So it's like L goes inside of emails, H returns out, stuff like that. Uh, you can view attach. So once you have this attachment window, you can view attachments by, uh, you know, pressing L or clicking on them or something like that, and they can pop up. So you can save them with with S. You know, let's say I want to save this, or I can also open it up or something like that. There's my CV for whatever reason, which I haven't actually updated in like a year or something. Um, so you can do basic stuff like that. Now um, you can check the man for all of the main bindings. I made sure to list out all the basics for people. Uh, I don't think I've, actually I haven't pushed that change to the Git repo, no wait, no I have, it's right here. So it does list out some of the main bindings and changes here. Uh, notice also there are default key bindings that Mutt Wizard automatically configures. So let's say I wanna go to my sent mail box. Um, you can just press G and then S for sent or G and T for trash, G and D for drafts, G and I for inbox, stuff like that. Um, so a lot of your boxes, a lot of the most common boxes will be configured automatically. And notice if you're you know, over here in this uh, sidebar, you can go up and down with control J and control K, open one of these with control O, you can do it that way if you want. Um, so you can check the manual for how to send mail and all that kind of stuff uh, because it's all in there But this is just notifying you that that is a possibility now You can add as many as nine accounts with mutt wizard and you can switch between them by pressing like I2 or I3 or I1 Those are the bindings for that. So all of that stuff is automatically configured by mutt wizard so you can also um, there are other mutt wizard commands so for example uh, Mutt Wizard LS just lists the accounts and their numbers. You can de delete an account or something else like that, um, or purge to get rid of everything. Another option is cron. So um, I should say that Mutt Wizard comes with a script called MailSync, and if you run that, what that what's that that is going to do is it uh, checks your remote email. It basically runs MB Sync to download all your new mail. And if you have new mail, it's going to give you a notification that's you know going to pop up. Um, so that's really I I use that. Um, but you can also you can run that manually, or you can just run Mutt Wizard and Cron, and that will ask you for uh, ask you to basically. Um, uh, you can set it as a cron job. So let's say I want my email to be updated every five minutes. Um, so it'll say cron job added and the mail sync will sync every five minutes. Uh, so actually, let me see, it says no cron job for, uh, yeah. So our cron job is there, so you can go there, edit it. You can actually give options to mail sync that are in the sync options, but you know, whatever. So that's honestly pretty much it. There are some complications and I do note them on the readmes and all that stuff. If you have, uh, where is it? Yeah, so this stuff down here. So if you're a Gmail user, you might need to activate uh, less secure applications or get two-factor authentication. Uh, Proton, mail, uh, Proton Mail users have to use the Proton Mail bridge. And there are some complications with like university email or enterprise email. That's because a lot of times those services will require you to create an extra pass password that you use to log in. But all that kind of mutt wizard can handle all that. That's just you have to do some stuff before uh, that's active. Um, now I will say for those of you who used mutt wizard a gajillion years ago, you might remember that what you had to do is, uh, you know, basically there, let's um, open up the mutt 
uh, config folder. You used to have to clone the whole re repo to your MUT folder, and there are all these different files and templates in a big mess, but now it's much, much easier. Um, it, it, you just have the MUT, uh, the MUT config here, which it'll add the needed files here if necessary. You'll see it uh, basically sources the MUT wizard configs, and your, it auto-generates uh, commands for switching between accounts, and it keeps all of your accounts in here in the accounts folder. So here is my uh, number one account named Mutt. So, and as you create more, they'll be, they'll go in there. Or we, let's just delete an account. So we'll say mw delete, delete Mutt. Say yes, and uh, there, it's gone. Or it hasn't updated yet, but yeah, there, it's gone. So anyway, that's a bit about it. I encourage you to check it out. I think um, it's about to the point where, you know, most, uh, I think it's, I'm not going to say bug free, but there are the only bugs are bugs that are, have principled reasons for existing. So I encourage you for, uh, I encourage you to check it out. And, um, if you want, you can also open up a pull request on GitHub or GitLab to add your own do domain to, uh, the domains list. So that will make it even easier for other people who use Mutt, uh, or the Mutt wizard. So anyway, that's about it. I hope you check it out. I'll put, I'll put links in the description and I will see you guys next time.